Hey YouTube, we're here with the uh, the Jeepa High Wing, also known as the Sig Rascal. I'm running a 10-7 prop. I'm just going to go over the modifications I made to this plane since when I got it. That was a three-channel plane when I got it, and there was a lot of little problems. But uh, anyway, um, we've made a flyable, put in all new electronics. Got a, a Turnigy DST 1200 motor, and I have two holes drilled here to get to the mount. Um, they're one sixteenth of an inch uh, set screws, which is kind of weird. Maybe it's some strange millimeter size, but I couldn't get any of my millimeter size to work. And then uh, prop saver with we'll collet, and I'm running a 10.7 APC style, a standard direction um, prop. You don't need a 10.7 though. You could probably get away with the 10.5 easily. Um, down below, I have cut some vent holes for ventilation. And then behind the motor, I cut like five holes in so the ventilation will be able to make its way through the cabin uh, for cooling. Uh, I put on an XT60 connector so I can use all my regular XT60 batteries. Um, and then I also did a, a GST connector as well. I'm using a Lemon RX six channel receiver, no stabilization. This thing is pretty solid. You don't need stabilization. Although if you're new to flying, it might help. Um, this plane will fly without ailerons, so it's going to definitely fly without stabilization. <clears throat> and that's the thing I actually did here. This will be the aileron modification. As you can see, the model coat hasn't been redone. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to. There's also lights. I'm going to have to turn this on here in a minute so you can see it. Uh, ailerons. Basically, when you cut an aileron out of a, a regular hollow wing that's a stick built, you have to do all sorts of construction to build a backer and in my case I use CA hinges so I had to build something to receive the CA hinge. Um, took tons of pictures of the process if anybody's interested just send me a message. Um, and then of course the elevator and rudder. I reinforced the control horns that were they'll get a view of this. Just basically cover them with CA and then adjusted to the most innermost uh, point on both the elevator you want to see that from the side and the uh, rudder. Okay, come back to the, the tail dragger. I put it in so it's removable. If I have one screw, I take out the one screw, I can actually pop that out, spring load it. It's designed for um, the styrofoam aircraft and I, was, I wanted to see if it was going to work well for this application. If it does work well, I may inset it into the balsa, but I didn't want to compromise the whole balsa wood rudder. Um, so that may be prettier later, but for now it's actually not a problem for me. I don't mind it. Uh, it's not quite as good looking as it could. And then I cleaned some different things off the glass um, and kind of obstructed the vision because now I have aileron wires that are coming through. So let's go ahead and fire it up and we'll show you what it looks like. Uh, if you want to get a view of this real quick, I, I built this um, foam. This is actually like a squishy foam. And I just cut a size that wraps around the lipo and then I cut a hole to actually feed the leads through and then that keeps it positioned around the battery which is nice for when you're sticking it into a balsa wood um, structure because a lot of times there's not much structure to receive a battery oh and then I also did this little latch but I'll show you that here in a minute it just slides to to keep this on because I didn't want to have to constantly be putting screws in and out I hate having to use tools to fly an airplane so um, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in and I figured out this is a 2200 milliamp uh, 3S, so it's 11.1 .1 volts, 60C discharge rate. I happen to have XT60s on it. Um, so basically on this battery, you can go either direction in this frame because it fits both ways. But I found it to be a little bit easier to go ahead and put it so the leads go up in my application. So I'll just go ahead and work that in. Um, and you can see the ESCs uh, mounted along the side here. So basically the ventilation should come in and go around the battery and everything. So I just work it until it's basically all the way forward. And then this will compress down and hold that battery a little bit more so. And then I just grab my leads, which are soldered directly onto the ESC. Sorry guys, I'm, I got my JST got caught on something. Um, and then you can sit here and just go ahead and radio on first, throttle cuts on, timer's cleared, plug it in, and we'll give you a quick rundown on how all this looks. 
put this cover on, move that little latch back. That's made from a Listerine bottle and a single screw and a couple washers. So you've got the tail light, um, standard nav lights, red and green, uh, real bright, not anything too super blinding, but I really, really have, have enjoyed using that uh, tail light setup. So real quick, throttle cut's still on. I'm gonna turn throttle cut off. Throttle stick all the way up, all the way back down. That's just the way the ESC arms on this plane. So it's got plenty of power. Throttle cut's back on and tested, so it won't run into my finger. And uh, as you can see, I've got rudder. And then I've got uh, elevator and then aileron, aileron one, and I need to mix in aileron number two because they're actually run on separate channels. And uh, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me the ability to go ahead and set up flap rods. So if you wanna pause it, I'll get that set up and then you guys can see that too. Okay guys, I decided I should probably show you. This is a DX18 Spectrum um, Gen 1. System setup, yes. Model select. Jeep uh, high wing, okay, make sure you're on the right model. And then you want to go into the wing type, in my case, oops, excuse me, model type, oops, not model type, aircraft type, there we go. And I have it set to one aileron and one flap. Now, I'm going to keep it that way because at some point I'm going to probably go ahead and put in flaps as well. Um, but for now, I guess I will set it to flaperons. There we go, flaperon and then I can switch it later on. Now the channel assign, I basically want to set up my auxiliary one is going to be the left aileron and right elevator or right aileron is by default going to be the aileron. So we'll just back out of this. Should automatically be set up. Okay, so we're back connected. Okay, if you want to get a view of that. So try to get a view of the ailerons and the stick position if you can. Yep. So that's going to roll the plane this way, that's going to roll the plane that way. And so I've got to get, um, go ahead and come back around and we'll, we'll set up the flap rounds furthermore. So we'll just go to flap system, we'll come in here, looks like I've already got it set up for switch B, so you can just highlight that and you just move it to whatever switch you want. And then you can go in here and set your elevator correction. So Basically, you want this value on a DX18 to actually be negative for this setting because when you use flap runs, typically you're gonna actually have to run, you're gonna have to run the elevator opposite of what you would normally do for correction on flaps. Um, typically when you run your flaps to position one, which, get a view of the flaps, the flap runs. Okay, so you're zoomed out. Mm -hmm. So basically when you turn them on, the elevator needs to go Look still. Okay. The elevator needs to go up to counter that, which is kind of weird because normally when you're running flaps, the flaps would deploy and then you would need to counter with actually some down elevator so you don't have a big balloon effect when you turn them on. So in this case, you kick on the flap runs. Do you have a view of both of them? Yeah. You can see they still fully function. Looks like I've got to work out my details. It looks like they don't have the exact same amount of throw, but I can work that out pretty easy. So basically that's how you do it guys. And then when you flip your switches, the flaps deploy or the flap rounds in this case. But like I said, this plane flies really good even without ailerons. And I just wanted the added control. And actually incidentally, I took this out and flew it. After I got this uh, aileron done, I took all the hardware and equipment and I just taped it to this wing to balance the plane. And then I took it up and flew it last night. And it wasn't really calm, it was kind of nasty and I was up there flying, had no problems. Um, one, one thing that's left to do still on this plane beyond potentially doing flaps, which I'm gonna do really big flaps even though it doesn't need flaps at all. Um, I'm gonna figure something out on the landing gear. So anybody got any good ideas? I'd really like something that'll allow them to swing out. So give me tips if you guys got them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll get a flight video in in the next couple of days. Don't forget to like and subscribe.